So this is Kashif. Like I do work here as a software engineer in mm -hmm. New Star. So New Star is uh, the telecom company. They do work in the uh, ISP and other telecom domains, and they have other security services as well. And I come. I came in touch with Ali and then we discussed and then we set up this group in Washington area. So mm -hmm. to, to educate or to communicate or to make a groups to do some discussions around the technologies and then open sources and then NGO uh, works, right? So nonprofit thing. So, so I came in with the Ali's help. I joined this group, Take Soup. To, to help community with you know, different uh, sections or different area. Mm -hmm. So today, like we have to, uh, we decided to start an event. So we, I thought like, what should be the first event? So I thought like, it would be good if we are going with the technology, then we have to discuss with the WWW. Like nowadays, this is the baseline for the technology, right? Everything, if we have to go, we have to go to the browser and search and look for the information for the data for anything. So I thought it it would be good to go with this topic first. So I picked uh, the WW, the history or the basic information. So mm -hmm. let me go. So before that, like the test soup, as Ellie mentioned, like, so yeah. So this is the nonprofit group. So we have, we started here and we are trying to build this community, a strong community in this area. And uh, Patrick, uh, we will need your help on this one as well. So it would be good if you will like, we'll work together on this section. Yeah. Okay. So we will build a stronger nonprofit technology in of our tools. Okay, so let me go with the worldwide wave history of what is actually worldwide wave. Generally, we people used to know this one as a wave. So today's agenda, we will cover the introduction of wave, history of wave, the wave and the internet, what is the difference between a uh, wave and the internet, uh, what is wave servers, how we do, what types of web, pa web pages we do use, what type of website, how to deployment, and hosting and manages um, our website. So let's go with the introduction of WWW. So the WW is a worldwide wave, commonly known as the wave is an information system where documents and the other resources are identified by the uniform resource locator and which may be interlinked and accessible over the internet. So we do have two things. One is a wave. And the other one is the internet. So internet is, we can say, generally people use both term like internet and uh, worldwide wave WW together, like in the same, in the same meaning, but there is a basic uh, like minor difference between the wave and the internet. In front, you, we can say the internet is the infrastructure that wave used to access the resources and, uh, and to get this facilitated with the internet intra, uh, infrastructure. And the resource of the World Wide Web are transferred via the hypertext protocol like HTTP. And we client use a web browser like as a client application, web browser. And uh, it is published by a software application called a web server. So if we talked about the internet or if we talked about the web, so basic things we need, the client application, the browser where people need to type the uniform locator, they have to type the address. And from there, it routes, it use the internet resources to get the domain where it has to be go. And then we have a web servers that is the destination of that. We will discuss of different things like history of worldwide wave, the internet and other waves uh, how what is the difference basic difference between the wave and the internet because these two words are symbols to each other and understanding of wave server what is wave server how it's different types of website like the wave pages what types different types of uh, wave contained and um, understanding of hosting and deployment of waves uh, website like how can we host or deploy our website and and any questions then so let me start with the introduction of World Wide Web. So World Wide Web is most commonly known as a web. So 
generally people used to say as a wave and it is the information system where documents and the other wave resources are identified by uniform resource locator which may be interlinked by hyperlink and are accessible over the internet so this is the wikipedia definition of world wide wave so world a wave is like you know the spider wave right it's connected with one another and it is a complete mesh so world wide wave is is we can say the repository we do have all those contains and everything available and we have to identify those information through the uniform resource locator so generally we used to say the urls so uniform resource locator and in 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 the website we can have a multiple multiple resource locator so each like uh, um, web, web page can link with the other web page and through that the interlink we can we do access over the internet so internet is not the web web is not the internet but they do have a close relationship web is an application internet is a infrastructure that provide support to um, to work or to run the web um, to the web application or website the resource of the world wide web are transferred via the hypertext pro transfer protocol we used to say as a http may be accessed by the users by a software application called a web browser and published by a software application called a web server so for the website or for the web application we do need a client application we used to say as a browser like chrome or bing we do have a safari firefox so different client browser we do use and and we do type the we do type the url in uniform resource locator the urls in the website and 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 then we look for the some of the information over the internet right through the web so internet is an infrastructure they provide the support to run the web application the website so internet is the network uh of the system networks of the computer networks of the application servers so this is the internet they provide the basic infrastructure to the website so if we are using for for example i have used here some site.com so some site is the domain name and http is a protocol we are using to access the web server and this some site.com can be located on the other side of the world nobody knows where this um, this domain is hosted where the web servers resides but this intra the in the internet the network the computer network the internet actually provides the beauty of this to to find this website from the any side of the world like it could be in japan this uh, the, this website can host it in a japan or australia or in canada or us itself right so they find this address and get this information and load the page so when when the client when the user type the urls on the client hit the submit button it send the http get request and find the domain name and get the information and it load the first index page to the client interface on the client browser but we do always have a questions right how how my web browser connected to the world how many web browser find web server what is the page not found what if the server not found what is the ip address where it fits what is dns what are those rules how internet works so these are the questions we do like these are the curiosity we always know want to know that how internet work how the web work so before go to that the function um, before go to that those answers let me go back to the history and just know how this when this world wide web invented when people started using this world wide web so i do have some uh, wiki information so sir tim berners lee invented the world wide web in 1989 and sir sir tim berner lee is a british computer scientist he was born in london and his parents were early computer scientists working on one of the earliest computers so he had a family background of the computer science computer so he had some curiosity and based on that he invented something so earlier lee was working 
uh, on the CERN. Uh, yes, CERN, he was working in a Euro European organization for the nuclear research and where he invented uh, the World Wide Web. So actually, team had written three fundamental technologies that remain the fundament foundation of today's web. The first was HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. This is the programming language for the, um, uh, you can say, for the web, the baseline of the web. The second is URI, Uniform Resource Identifier. And we can, we generally use to say as an address, the web address. And third, the Hypertext pro uh, Transfer Protocol. So this transfer protocol actually communicate from the client application to the server and client application decode the HTML code in, in the you, you know interesting um, GUI interfaces or something. So it they translate this hypertext language, markup language in a readable form. And Tim also wrote the first wave page editor. So he he for for that one, he wrote the application, the editor, that was the worldwideweb.app. This was the first editor for the browser. And he, one of the interesting thing, like his personal, his the office machine, the office computer was used as the first wave server. So the first wave server. And by the end of 1990, the first wave page was served on the open open internet and in 1991 people outside of the CERN were invited to join the new wave community. So from since 1991, people are getting benefited from this wave. And this was the gift of Sir Tim Berner. And then Tim moved to CERN to a Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 1994. And he founded the World Wide Wave community and the international community devoted to developing open web standard. And he is the main the director of WC3 of this day. So this wave is the gift of Sir Tim Berner. So we cannot assume like how we should be like without the wave. This is one of the beautiful gifts to the technology. So any questions so far? Okay. So now the basic, the web and the internet. The World Wide Web commonly known as a web and internet enables resources on the World Wide Web. So internet is a networks of network. So we do have a network. It could be a LAN in, at home itself. We do have a network, right? We have one modem. We do use routers and different devices connected with this router and we do communicate with each other, with each devices. So we do have uh, internet in our home itself. So we do have uh, use internet or LAN. You can say a network. We do have a LAN in at home. We do have a LAN in office. So all LANs are connected and through they do make, they do build a big network of these networks just called as an internet. It uses has hardware and protocol to function. So router, so for this, uh, if we have to build a um, LAN or network at home itself, we will need a one router and some devices to connect with that router. And we can access our devices, uh, inter like we can access our home devices. And if we are in office, our office machines and systems are connected, printers and other devices connected with this router and we can communicate from one machine to other machines, but we cannot communicate outside the world. We do communicate from uh, within the LAN. But if all LANs are connected with the different router and modems, then we can do connect with the outside of the world and that is the internet. So the router connected to the internet is modem. The role of router is to keep traffic with inside the LAN, with inside the network and outside the network. And modem is a device connected to the outside network that belongs to ISP. So let me, uh, with this picture. So just assume this is one of the internet, like this is one of the in network we do have at home or office. So we are connected with router and we do have a modem. Modem is actually the connection from the outside world. So ISP, if we do have some internet connection from the ISP service provider, they do provide modems and they do provide the external IPs in that modem. So once we do connect with the modem, without this modem, we can have the internet 
uh, internal network we can have a lan we can communicate multiple machines within the lan but if we do have a modem and we connected with the isp and isp provided this modem then we can connect with the isp network so now our network has expanded right so earlier we had just lan now we have isp and isp can have the multiple a customer right so the isp is connected with the multiple so now we do have a big network so if we go through this modem we can connect with any of the machine that is connected with this ip right and then these ips are connected with the regional regional ips so these are the big ips like they could be a smaller they got they have a big regional ip so multiple ips connected with the big regional ip so if ip is connected with big regional ip so my access has increased right so i can connect through this modem to isp isp is any of the machines connected with the ip and now i can access any of the machine that is connected with the regional ip so because every uh, isp has a modem and every modem has a public a static public ip so and all these regional ip is connected with the backbone networks these are the big companies they have the access in multiple cities or countries so they connected with the backbone networks so if my website is hosted on the other side of the world and i am trying to access some of the um, website from here so it based on the host name or uh, let me let me take here as ip if we do have a ip router my router will will decide whether it has to be internet net, internal network or outside then based on that my modem send it to external and then they find for they looks for my ip address or the domain name and then finally they find the destinations and once they do reach the destinations they return the re, they return reply uh, 200 with that the web page web content and again it come back to my machines then i can see the website is open or my uh, whatever i'm looking for that i i do see on my browser or my client application so as i mentioned like isp has its own network i isp also connected with outside networks isp is router route traffic within the isp network or outside of the network where isp belongs to it could be a larger isp or regional isp so regional isp is connected with the larger network and there are the companies that op operates network in the multiple cities those are the backbone of the network they connected with different cities and countries and router find the best route to reach the resource which we trying to reach through the ww so if i'm coming back to this picture so i'm here my website is hosted in some of the web server we do have a complete world over here and my internet actually helps our uh, webs to find the destination web server and get the page load on the client browser so this was about the internet how internet work now the dns because here we generally say like with the domain name we say the name like xyz.com google.com we do not say the ips right but here our network we work on the ips and if you see like we do have our two types of ips ip version 4 and ip version 6 and it's still like uh, now this uh, ip version 4 has some limitation they had some limit count because it works on the octet of class based right so every ip should be unique because ip is the name of the machine if i do have a machine there should if someone has to identify my machine they will based on the ip right so ip is the unique we cannot use the duplicate ip for the different machine like same ip for the different machine we cannot use duplicate ip so ip should be unique and now we do have um, many iot internet devices and every device need ip to ident for their identification so it is the complete range of ip4 is almost exhausted but still we are using ip4 and ip6 has a 128 bytes so they have the extended range so ip4 was the class based and these works on the protocol so http we we talked right so for http is a hypertext transfer protocol now browser use this http to send message to the web server and this this runs on a port 80 like by default it is port 80 and if we do use the secure transfer protocol https so it runs on a 443 
And for the internet communication, this works on the trans TCP and IP. So two things, right? So both works together. On the machine, we do have a TCP that if we do have to communicate from this machine to web server, right? So we have to, we need our own channel for the communication. So IP is to use to find the web server, use to find the destination address, IP use over the network and TCP is like the transmission control product protocol. It actually fragment this message into uh, 1500 KBs, 1500 bytes, um, I think it's KBs. And they, they divide the messages in a smaller chunk and then they put some he header. Like if uh, we do submit requests from this client, so this client uh, TCP put the header of the source IP address, the destination IP address, and they do have uh, some sequencing. So once it goes and reaches to the destination, then destination knows that what was the source IP address. And based on that, the destination return and it reaches to the source IP address. So in TCP IP protocol method methodology, we do send the uh, header. Uh, IP address, request IP, and the source IP and destination IP address in the headers, and and through that it communicates from source to destination machines, and and then come back to the source machine. In any questions on this one? Any? Just a, a quick clarifying question. So why does um, TCP break it down in terms of different component parts? Is that to speed up the transfer process? Like, what's the reason for breaking it out? Right, so they do they do make a small pieces, right? And a small pieces communicate independently without like uh, if let's take an example, I do have one message and it's broken into two parts. TCP broke in two parts, right? So uh, message A can go to the one route, message B go to the another route. So it is the faster as in for the security as well. If someone will encrypt and decode one of the part, if they will not have the another part, they cannot use the complete message, right? So oh. this is for security as well. So once we do receive, so our the client, the TCP on the machine, once TCP received all those messages, then he uh, it sequence it and display it to the computer uh, to the client browser. Yeah. Right. And same on the server side, they do decode and they, they if any of the pa package is lost, they do resend. Oh, okay. Application resend that packet again to the server or to the source or to the destination. But they break it for the faster and it it is not sure like it is it is not like all packet will follow the same route. Two packets can follow the different route. And even the uh, if a message sent from client to server, it is not like the same server will send response on the same route. Server can use the different route to send responses to the client. So it is it it is totally algorithm based on, and it is not a fix like say they will all packet will use the same route or for same route for incoming or outgoing. It will it always be it always vary. Am I right right in remembering that this had something to do with the this architecture has to do with like the military origins of some of the internet where they're like oh if one of our locations has been blown up. It, we need to have another way for the data to automatically reroute around. Right, data. right, right, right. So that's why, like, and and for that one as well, right? Every every packet will have um, is encoded, and they are broken down in a different packages. If any of the package is, uh, like, you, you can say like um, lost or decrypt or someone hacked that one, but they will not have the complete information. Gotcha. Okay. Anything? Okay. So, so now the DNS. So DNS is the domain name server because here we on the network we were talking about the IPs and IPs are unique. But here on if we say on the website we never use IPs, right? We like we never use IP on the front end. We we don't say like this is my IP. Go and check on the website on 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 the web or client. We always provide the domain name. So there should be some mapping right between ip to domain name mm -hmm. so we do have this uh, we do like we do ha we have a dns servers all the way and dns server actually do, uh, dns server is nothing just the map between the ip and the host name so if in the same example this is the client browser and if we have like some site.com 
and this is not the IP, this is the domain name. If we send it, then it goes through this modem to ISP, right? And ISP to the regional ISP and regional ISP has a domain name server. So they do have a mapping, like what should be the IP? Did they, 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 they find this DNS or not? If they do not find this, if they, if they do find DNS within their network, they just respond like they, have, they got it. They find this web server, right? If they do not find the uh, DNS within their network, then they send it to the other network, the backbone network. Like they are looking for this host name. Do you know the address of this host name? If this the DNS server find those address, they return it. If they do not find that the DNS address, they again transfer to the another. So through this mechanism, they do search the DNS name in the all DNS server. If they do find the server, then they re reply with the content of that the website because DNS server gets the IP address and based on the IP address, they do route to the appropriate web server. If they do not find the DNS information, they do not find the IP address, then they do return 404 not found. So for this example, some site.com custom uh, end user requested from here, it went to this regional IP, they didn't find DNS. They don't have any DNS entry. And then it went to the backbone network and backbone network had multiple dns server but they didn't find then again they have the another backbone and then one of the dns server has this entry like this was the website and this is the ip address and this is a public ip so once they found the public ip then it from this this dns servers routed the, routed this traffic to this ip now the traffic is going with the ip so they routed this traffic the this request to 190.233.210.255. And from here, it raised to the web server. Now web server has both source IP and destination IP. So now it they will take a different route. Once web server have this request, web server will return 200 received successfully. And then the request, they will have a get request. So they will post the content of the index page and uh, and, and web server has a destination as well. So they will send this response to the, to the client browser. So client, client browser will receive this response. So during that, the response, they do have IP. Then it will not come through the DNS servers because they do have IP. But during that, the request initiation, they don't have a, a, a IP address. Then they need a DNS server to get the mapping of this domain name versus their IP address. So any thing on the DNS side? No. Okay. So the understanding of the web server. So now we have discussed about what is web, what is internet, what is DNS, right? Uh, what now, what is web server? So because here the destination is web server, right? If we, if we are looking for any of the website or any of the URL, it needs to reach to the web server. So what actually web server is? So web server is a combination of hardware and software. Like generally people used to say that hardware and software, but uh, is hardware is like, um, we need a hardware for anything, right? But basically it is a software and software known as a HTTP because it's run on a HTTP protocol and HTTP is runs on a port 80 and uh, the all website or web applications work on the HTTP protocol. So some, Sometimes we use to say as a HTTP protocol, or this is a web server. The application runs on a hardware that provides the processing, memory, and storage. So for any of the software, we'll need a hardware. So sometimes people use to refer as a hardware as well, because we need to install this software application, the web application somewhere that's need a storage processing memory. So primary function of web server is to store, process, and deliver web pages to client default port is 80 and secure like if we do have a secure uh, ssl certificate if we want to do the traffic through the secure channel with the in uh, encryption mode then we need a, a secure uh, secure certificate and it it runs on 443 so we generally used to see on the http it's as a https so if we do have a s if we do have a S here, that means it is a secure channel. It's done on a 443. So if we say web server, so the function of web server is to store. 
So if we say store, like we do have a wave application. So wave application contains some of the files, right? We can upload, we can download, and we do have a, a, a um, website itself over there. So we need a storage to store all those files process. So if we do have a request, right? So based on the request, different type of request, we have to process, web, web server has to process it and return the appropriate content to the client. So they have to process and deliver web pages to client. So if once they have that the process, they, they have file, they have processed it. Now they have to deliver. They are responsible to deliver those content to the client as well. So these are the primary function of the any of the web server. They need some storage. They have they need some processing and they have to deliver message. So they have to run on the protocols. Okay. So any question on web server? The uh question I have is uh, related to the, the secure port, the 443 and the SSL. So when you're using a secure channel like HTTPS, when you're adding SSL, is it essentially encrypting the transfer of the information from the client to the server? Is that how it works? Right, right. So when we do use secure certificate, then we have to buy the certificate and we have to install on a web server. So mm -hmm. on the web server, we'll have that this, uh, certificate, right? They have the uh, algorithm for the encryption. So once client submits request with 443, so that means this is a secure channel. And sometimes um, client browser also need to install the certifications, like if we do have. But if we have 443, so that means it, this is a secure channel. So whenever the request reaches to the uh, server, server request encrypted and like two ways normal they do communication between the client and server openly without any secure tunnel and uh, they do on the plain text just take an example they do have a plain text but with the 443 they do use the encryption so client will also have that the encryption algorithm so they, because they do return right so they do send some keys so the communication between the clients or client and server is encrypted Mm -hmm. So if someone will hack, someone will get that the data, but they will not have that the key to decrypt. So they, they will, there will be no use of getting those pages. Uh, if some intruder or someone try fetch that those information. So SS uh, 443, like the SSL is the secure channel. They always go through the encryption. They don't have a plain text. So okay. if I say, if I have to send a message, hi, how are you? So if I will send it to port 80, it will go as a hi, how are you? If someone will encrypt, even it is um, intruder will get it. So they, they know that it is how or how are you, right? But if I will use the 443, it will be encrypted format. So if someone will get any of the packet TCP packet, they will not decrypt it. So they will, there will be no use for them. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so now we 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 understand like we discuss about the what is wave what is internet what is wave server what protocol we do use right so now we do have a wave server so how what type of websites or how like what types of website or wave application generally we do have so generally we do have a two type of wave content either static and dynamic so the basic difference between a static and dynamic as the name says static, that means static. If we have something written on my the HTML file and if we have uploaded my HTML file on the web server, if 10 different user is opening, they will see the same page, right? And if I have to update any of the information in my web page, then again, I have to go with the same process. I have to download or I have to edit that the my HTML file on the web server and then I, uh, or you can say like, I have to download and I have to edit it and then upload back to the server. And then um, it will display on the website. So a static on the runtime, we cannot change any of the content of the web page that will remain same. And for every user around the world, it is not like the user specific information we can display. So a static page is like, is is the same is and generally HTML site or mm, used for the static page. Dynamic content is like we do have the um, you can say the information on the web page is not the same for all user. If you are logged in with your profile, you can see your content on the website. If I'm logged in with my user profile, I can see my content on the, the website. 
or the other example if we have a shopping cart right and if we are dealing mm, uh, if we have uh, merchandising something on the website and I have five product to sell, if my page is static, then I have provided only five information. Now I have a six product to launch, right? So in this case, I have to update my new information on the website again. So that will be the complete process, download, update information on the web, in, web page. Even if I have to change the price or address or telephone number, I have to go there, download and update the programming files or HTML file on the server. But in the dynamic content, I can add it. So for the dynamic, not just the web application, not just the web HTML file, we'll need a database. So the we uh, the web servers have all those uh, programming files, or you can say the web pages and that connected with the database as well. So if we do change any information in the database, application or website reads contain from the database and display to the user. So the benefit of this website is we don't need to go and deploy, deploy the same website again and again for any of the minor changes. We can update information in database and that will reflect on the website. So dynamic content can change on the runtime. If uh, we don't need to, we will not have any downtime website is up we do have updated information in database and it will reflect on the so for so dynamic and we do use uh, for dynamic website and we need to use some of the programming languages like java php perl python dot net and we will need a database as well like we do have a sql mysql rackle the different database but for the dynamic content we also need our admin or dashboard or admin portal where we can update data uh, in database itself. So this is the basic difference between static and dynamic web content. Any question? No. So understanding of hosting and deployment of website. So for any of the website, we do need basic uh, thing first to register our domain. So we do have a few registrar, domain registrar companies. They do registration and they do provide host. Some companies mm, does both uh, hosting as well as registration, but some just do the registration. So, so major, we do have a GoDaddy, HostGator, Google Domains and other service provided. They do registration. So if let's take an example, I have to uh, set up my website, um, xyz.com, right? So first I have to register my domain name. First we have to check, is it available or not? So every domain company provides some tools so where we can check the availability of that, the domain. So if my domain is available, if I'm looking for xyz.com and if it is available, so I can go to any of the registrar company and register my domain. So if I'll register my domain, so that means they will like now, uh, I can use that the domain name for the, my application, but just registration is not the complete uh, setup of the website. This is the first step to get the domain name. So once the domain name is there, then I have to select a web hosting company. So web hosting company and, and the domain registration and web hosting, they do have these we use as a services. And this is like the have to do the renewal every year on based on the different plan but these are the continuous thing we have it is not like one thing one time we have registered our domain and is done we have to do the renewal or we have to pay every year for that the domain name and for the hosting and web hosting is like we are renting something right so we now we have the domain but we have to host somewhere we need some infrastructure where we can put our files we can we can uh, put our videos and audios and our information to and we will need a bandwidth to access those files so for that one we need a web hosting uh, web hosting company we need a service provider from the web hosting to host our website so so basic domain registration and then web hosting so while choosing the web hosting company we have to see what is our requirement because we do have a linux server windows server and hosting companies do provide uh web servers on the both operating systems so based on our requirement like dotnet if we have uh any of if my plans to use the dotnet application for my website then i have to 
mm, uh, I have to pick the window machine, not the Linux server. We, if I, I want to go with the PHP or Python or Perl or Ruby, so I can use any of the window or um, Linux servers. So I have to see uh, which one is useful for, useful for us. Second, like if I don't want to write any of the website from the scratch or anything, I just want to use uh, on the shelf application and just customize and just do the content management and just put the, our content, not the complete development of it. So we can use some open source CMS available like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, Django. We do have many CMS applications. So you just have to install these application on your web server and it is ready to go. You just have to put your content based on your requirement, what, uh, based on your choices. You just have to put your content. So these are the ready to go applications. You don't have to uh, do all uh, a web, web design or uh, web creation from the scratch. But if you go with the programming language, then generally for the server side, for the static web pages, just HTML is fine. But if we have to go with the dynamic then java perl php dot net ruby python so we do have a uh, different programming language we do use and and we need a uh, web hosting web servers web hosting companies for the storage like if we have to host our application website so we we will uh, website that means we'll have uh, some files so we have to host those files we need a storage we need processing capacity because what will happen if hundred or thousand users will log in or will access my browser um, web application almost at the same time then what will be the response so we have to see the processing and bandwidth as well we have to see the server memory to see the how my application will respond if we'll have mm, uh, if multiple users will open my website on the peak time or off peak time or nowadays we do have a cloud so based on that we do have elastic things so based on the requirement and based on the high peak time or low peak time they do allocate bandwidth and all those things but yes these are the basic things we do need uh, for the hosting so so once we do have registration like once we have a domain once we have the, we have a, uh, we like we allocate, we bought some space from the web hosting, then the domain register, uh, then web hosting provider uh, provides key panels. So they do provide some panels to us. And for the domain registrar, also provide some configuration panels. So what we have to do once we do have a domain registration, we do have a hosting, then hosting com companies provide the domain server name, DNS names, or IP address. Right, so in the control panel, we have to configure, we have to point those domain names and we have to configure the DNS name in the C panel of the domain registration. And we have to point like now we have the domain, we have the hosting company IP address. So we have to configure all those information in control panel. And once it is ready, it takes almost uh, 12 to 24 hours to, uh, to get this configuration live and across the internet so it takes like 12 to 24 hours to get live website up or website live and once we do the, all those configuration it is ready to go so these we things we have to consider a few things while hosting our website or while starting our website like the what server we have to pick what programming language or based on the requirement we can choose the uh, what application or programming language use and where we have to host, what should be the capacity bandwidth. Because for the bandwidth, I'm just giving you one example. If you have a page of 2KB, right? The index page or welcome page of 2KB. If the client is requesting for that page, so they are going to use a 2KB file, right? So they are consuming the 2KB bandwidth. So if 100 user is logging on the almost at the same time, right? So it will be, in two, uh, two into 200 KBs, right? So bandwidth is required because if band if we'll use the less bandwidth, then what will happen if more user will um, try to access the page almost at the same time, then, then other page might not render on their client because if they will exceed their bandwidth, their capacity. So for that one, we will need and uh, we'll need the bandwidth and the processing capacity. Okay, so any question? Yeah, that was really helpful. So almost I'm done.
So any question overall question for this one? I know like I have put more uh, like I actually right now I don't have any C panel. That's why I didn't provide any of the screenshot. But okay. if I have any, then it would be good to provide some of the screenshot for the uh, um, C panels. That would be really helpful. But yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I don't have any other questions. This was really helpful. I, I really appreciate the kind of broad overview. Um, what was especially helpful for me anyway was the um, review of the, the transmission and the transfer protocols with HTTP and going from uh, place to place. Um, I sometimes have a hard time visualizing all of that, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great first event, and I think it's, yeah, this would be a great time to start bringing in other talent. We may have successfully twisted Patrick's arm while you were <laughs> off camera for a little bit into doing oh, something maybe around training and realize. onboarding people. I didn't realize actually. And then I thought, what is going on? Then and then and then I know like it was not working at all. That's okay. So I'm gonna dive into my next call, but congratulations. I'll get the video up to you by the end of the day. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and yeah, and I would encourage you and Patrick to talk and see if maybe there's a, a future presentation or, or interview you do with him around like onboarding, training, bringing people into new platforms that could be quite interesting for a future event. But I'm off. Ciao, ciao. Catch you soon. Thanks so much, Eli. Yeah, so um, thanks so much um, uh, for the walkthrough. I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I think I would be interested in, in seeing what we might be able to do for future events. Um, let me actually in the chat here, I'll put my uh, my work email um, mm -hmm. and feel free to to reach out. And uh, let me also um, give you my LinkedIn profile as well. Uh, there you go. Yeah, uh, I'd love to stay connected um, since we're, we're kind of neighbors. <laughs> um, love to see what we might be able to do. Um, moving forward for sure 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 Patrick. and i have uh, uh, i have planned for other two events but like I, I earlier had planned for the december last week but you know the, the christmas week so i extended that one so i do have two more events so i will do mostly on the january end of january and end of february so i'm expecting okay. yeah, right and and in the meantime i think before that as well we will be in touch and we will make a new plan for, for for something right in this area to some new events or anything and if you'll have any input please let me know 